Welcome to one of, if not the most iconic race circuit in Formula 2. A track with absolutely no room for error, a track that requires every bit of skill these young drivers can muster. We're getting ready for lights out here in Monte Carlo. Alongside me today, I'm delighted to welcome back to the commentary box the 2012 GP2 champion, Davide Valsecchi. There looks to be a challenging race ahead of the drivers today, Davide. With that in mind, what are you looking out for today? Well, Alex, I want to see how the drivers at the back of the grid are going to roll down. They'll need to make an impact in the early stages, and they're probably hoping for a bit of luck at the start. We may see some bold maneuvers out there today. Okay, here we go. I know what you can do. Don't let me down. Right, here we are then, back on the grid for the second sprint race of the weekend. Hello everyone, and welcome back guys to a brand new video. Of course, if you missed out race one that went live yesterday, what are you doing? Go back and check it out. It completely sets the team ready for race two here of the Monaco GP weekend there. Yeah, I'll leave spoilers for just a couple of seconds, but you guys have been warned there. Looks like, again, it's going to be another nice sunny race here from the Monaco streets there. Again, soft tyres. No qualms or worries about that as well there. But yeah, we start this one P6 after making really good progress in the first sprint of the weekend. Fingers crossed that momentum can continue here as well. But yeah, let's dive in then here to sprint race two of the Monaco Grand Prix. Liam Lawson on pole ahead of David Beckman. Five red lights. And it is going to be lights out and away we go. Oh, a little bit of contact there immediately. With Bent Viscal as we head down towards Cell 1 there. I will hand, hold my hands up and admit that was completely my fault. And not the start we would have wanted. Losing the one spot already to the Trident there as we head up the hill in towards Casino Square. Looks like Yuri Vips has gone backwards. Uh, no, he's held on to track position there off the start as both of the Sharus still side by side as we head down the hill. Oh, I thought about having a look up the inside of Bent Viscal there. But thought that door was probably going to get slammed in my face and probably rather rightly so. However, we're going to always take a second invitation there. Big, big dive up the inside of uh, Bent Viscal there. Down in towards the hairpin. And we have therefore held on to our grid position here. But what an interesting start that's been to the second race weekend of the season. Or of the Monaco Grand Prix even, I should say. All over the back of Guillaume Samaya. As we head down in towards the chicane there. Obviously pulled off a mega dive bomb on him right at the end of the first sprint race. But, yeah, not quite going to have the same heroics on lap one of Sprint Race 2 here. Of course, 15 points again available for the win. And none if I rattle it into an armco barrier and lose a wheel there. Got to be super, super careful with doing that. It is so, so fun to really stop trying to stretch these cars here around Monaco. But if it goes wrong, it goes really, really badly wrong really, really quickly. But anyway, back down in towards turn one. We have ended up holding on to track position there off the start, but I'm sensing a podium could be doable in this second sprint. Guillaume Samaya really, really struggling through the hairpin. No idea. Code is that definitely is something that needs to be fixed with these F2 cars here. But are we about to see a replication of what we were able to do at the end of Sprint Race 1 here all over the back of Guillaume Samaya as we head down into towards the chicane and pretty much a carbon copy of what we did to the Brazilian in race one there. Up the inside. Team again happy with it there. And poor old Guillaume Samaya. Nothing he can do in that situation. We commit to the move so late to try and take him by surprise. But perhaps he just needs to consider going defensive in towards the chicane there. But that is great for us. I'm in a P5 once more. But now we've got Enzo Fittipaldi. Already two seconds up the road there as Lawson goes fastest. Beckman goes even faster. Already getting close to the 21s. We obviously got the fastest lap bonus points from the first race. So with some clean air, maybe we can do it again. Liam Lawson dips into the 121s. We, however, are not going to dip. We're going to splash right down into a 21-3 early on in this second race. There, And I'm really getting to grips now with this car. I know what we need to do to really maximise it around this circuit. And Enzo Fittipaldi, yeah, that gap's coming down. Oh, don't want to do that too often here around Larascas. Just nicked the wall on the inside there. And it didn't quite put the car into a half spin. But certainly just tipped the back end slightly. That was a pleasant reminder on F1 2021. You know, Monaco, we've been we've been playing fast and loose with it so far. 
in terms of our driving style, it will bite back a million times harder than whatever you can try and do for this Armco Concrete Canyon. Oh, we got yellow flags out as well. Oh, it looks like someone's gone round. I think it's Bent Viscal. Has he had issues or has he looped it? I think he's caused a roadblock. So riding on board then with Bent Viscal as we head through in towards Sector 2 and his Trident just catches a slide, can't overcorrect. And the MP Motorsport car's nowhere to go. The ART as well in there. And that's been a roadblock here at the Monaco Grand Prix and nothing any of them can do. Surely that's a safety car. Yeah, we've got yellow flags everywhere at the moment. Oz, we've got another car going slowly. And there is a safety car. The safety car is out. There appears to have been an issue with multiple stopped vehicles on the track. David Beckman's breaking down at the same time there. As you can see, his car just completely goes up in smoke. But yeah, that's predicted. We're going to have to see a safety car here in Monaco. Was almost not concentrating on. Was stacking in the wall by himself. David Beckman, though, out of the Grand Prix. And yeah, I think we're going to see a lot of cars into the box. Certainly not worth pitting for us at the moment. We may as well claim track position. But carnage here in Monaco. And the first time I've seen a roadblock on this game, I think, ever. I must admit, as we come towards the end of lap 8 here, it's really taken the back mark. It's a rather long time to close back in to the rest of the field here. And it's ruining Safety a lot of good racing laps. Lap. Safety car in this lap. Let's make sure those tyres are up to temperature. And remember, there is no overtaking until the timing line. Stay in position until the green flags. Well, I genuinely wasn't expecting the safety car to come back in this lap. I thought we were going to go one more here. But we have got just under half a race then. Still left to go here as Liam Lawson out of the final corner is going to go green once more. And hopefully now, as the top runners have been bunched up here, we could be on for a podium here in the Monaco Grand Prix. Enzo Fittipaldi, though, just in front of us, who's been one of the strongest runners so far this year. Of course, still leads the championship as we head into this second sprint of the weekend. And I think has led the championship pretty much since race one of the season here. Of course, took pole position back in Bahrain. But yeah, we really, really kick out the back end, though, as we head down the hill. Team still worried about the tyres. Oh, it's a big, big knock, actually, into the back of Enzo Fittipaldi there. But despite that, clean around the outside we go. Down through there, but there again, it's a bit of a cheesy little move, to be honest. I might stop myself from doing it in the feature race there. I don't think we picked up any damage. No, it looks like we got away with that one as well. Oh, Yuri Vips really struggling out the final couple of corners. Can't seem to manage against his teammate Liam Lawson at the moment, who we're just watching romp away at the front of the field there. And I'm sure Yuri Vips is being told just do everything he can to try and keep me behind. With just six laps to go here, but I'm sensing maybe a win could be on the cards here in the second sprint race of the weekend. They're just tipping the front end in. Oh, just getting a little bit over the curb or towards the ins inside there. It's always so weird around this track, you know, sort of right up towards the curbs. I don't know if it's drainage or what, but the car sort of like gets sucked towards the walls there. But around the outside of Yuri Vips. That time around, he seemed dead set on trying to keep it as left as he could on the exit of the hairpin there. So we'll take that. Great pass. Again, team happy with it. Liam Lawson, though, two seconds up the road with just five laps to go here in Monaco. Can we close up that gap and maybe try and challenge him for the race of victory there? Or are we going to see Vips and Fittipaldi try to apply the pressure once more? Trying to put some heat through the rears there and maybe a little bit of tarmac down for us as well. RS has now been re-enabled, but it looks like this one could be Australia versus New Zealand. So at the chequered flag there. One Australian might have done woefully at the Monaco Grand Prix this year, but it looks like another one might be able to pick up the pieces. And maybe Oscar Piastri will be the man that runs these streets in the future. Hopefully we'll see him very, very soon racing around Monaco in a Formula 1 car. 2022 won't be that year, but 2023 better be as well. Otherwise, it's one of the biggest robberies I've seen in the sport in recent years and that includes Abu Dhabi from just a couple of weekends ago yep still salty about that one but Liam Lawson the gap down to one and a quarter seconds this could get really close by the end of this race oh three to go and we are all over the back now Liam Lawson here we've got the DRS Keep managing your tires manage your tires and if we thought tire wear was easy in sprint race one it's going to be even easier now because of course safety car and we lost some good racing laps on this rubber but Liam Lawson, yeah, is feeling the pressure. We are looking formidable 
as we come towards the end of Saturday's action here from the Monaco Grand Prix. And all over the back. Look at that, Lawson. Oh, he comes across me on the exit there as we try to have a look down around the outside. And yeah, that is just how much pressure we're applying on Liam Lawson and how much he is cracking at the moment there. He kicks out the back end, making sure that we couldn't get the move done around the outside there. But are we going to be able to stay close enough down in towards the chicane? Let's wait and see. Team saying we don't need to worry about tyres. We are definitely within range at the moment. Two tenths back as we head in towards the chicane. Oh, big lock up though on the way in. Somehow we keep it pointing in the right direction there, but that's going to cost us. And we are going to dip back a little bit from Liam Lawson. He was just that little bit braver than Gillamy Samira had ever been down in towards that corner. Let's be fair, as you'd expect from Liam Lawson up against Gillamy Samaya. But yeah, look how quickly we just close back up though, attacking those curbs. Two to go though here from Monaco. And we've got to try and find any sort of open invitation, whether we received the letter or not. We've got to be RSVPing yes to the Amber Lounge party. Come on then, Liam Lawson. Let's see what you've got really attacking the curbs now. Trying to make this circuit as wide as possible. Honestly, it's reminding me of Mansell versus Senna all those years ago. But again, we're all over the back of the road in part sponsored car. They're up the inside again. No, Lawson just has enough at the moment to try and hang on as we try and put the power down on the exit of the corner here. We are applying so much pressure to Liam Lawson, but he is doing everything he needs to at the moment. Big, big slide. Basically drifted our way through the swimming pool chicane there is again all over the diffuser of the other car there is around the outside we go the high tech still doing everything he can to try and hold on one lap to go then here from the Monaco Grand Prix and this one could either end in heartbreak or the hero play here in the Monaco GP let's just wait and see if anything opens up there as we head out of turn one up the hill through Sandovot through all of these little kinks there as you dance between the walls. Flatten out, get on the brakes just before you reach the crossing there. And you can see we're again just gaining in on Liam Lawson here. Try and put the power down on the exit of Casino Square. Avoid the bump as again just we've got so much extra confidence under braking at the moment. Had a look at the inside in towards the hairpin there. Couldn't put the power down though and Liam Lawson that time round actually gets a pretty good run. On the exit of the corners. I just think desperation starting to creep in just a little bit for us at the moment there. We're going to be nowhere near close enough this time round to have a send in towards the chicane here. But Liam Lawson, is he going to do enough here in the Monaco Grand Prix? Or are we going to get any sort of invitation elsewhere on this lap there? Out in towards to back there. Break just at the 50 meter ball. They're down one gear. You can see how much we're attacking on the way through the swimming pool chicane. They're practically pushing him along as we head on the exit there. And look at that, Lawson makes just a little bit of a mistake as we head in towards Larascas here. Around the outside, we go side by side into the final corner of the Monaco Grand Prix there. Lawson keeps the nose there. We can't put the power down and Lawson's gonna take it. Yes, that's a podium. Excellent drive. The team have worked especially hard this weekend and this is a fantastic reward. Well, what a drive that was to take the win for High Tech GP today. And I have to wonder, Davide Valsecchi, just what set them apart from the competition here? And as they make their way down to the podium, there's no denying the strength of the high-tech GP team. It was an incredible performance today, and they fully deserve to stand on the top step. And now, let's take a look at the driver's stand. And here's how things are shaping up in the team's championship. 
We saw a dip in form from the championship leaders today. Their lead has taken a significant blow. Meanwhile, Hitech GP's strong weekend allows them to continue their march up the table. That's it for today's race. From Davide and I, it's goodbye, and we'll see you when Formula 2 returns. Well, there we are then, guys. The end of the second sprint race of the weekend there, and it's Liam Lawson. Looks pretty simple on paper. Poor position and race of victory, but those of you guys that stuck around know that was never quite the full story this weekend. They're side by side into the final corner. I thought we can't try and hook it up around the outside. It's never going to work. So I thought we can just slow in fast out there, really get the power. It could have been a drag race to the line, but Lawson held on nerves of steel on those final couple of laps there because we were pushing him hard to the checkered flag there. But with fastest lap means we're only one point behind him come the end of the race there. Fittipaldi and Guilherme Samaya third and fourth there. Another brilliant race for the Brazilians and the Charouz drivers there. Larim Zendeli in fifth ahead of Lungard, Armstrong and Alessio Deleda picking up a point there from 15th on the grid to 8th at the end of the GP there. Massively helped I'm sure by all of those pitters under the safety car and of course the absolute roadblock there. Yeah man, Guan Yu Zhou went from 21st to 11th Robert Schwartzman still only made up three places despite all that carnage and one of those was gained from Ralph Bosch on getting a penalty there. Yuri Vips and David Beckman both not making it to the checkered flag there. Bent Viscal despite causing that roadblock does come through in P20th at the end of the race there. But Fittipaldi five points clear on top now. Larim Zendeli still P2 there. Lawson closes in now just seven points back ahead of myself. Oscar Piastri now ahead of Richard Vashaw there. A big drop off back to a Delayda. And Porcher tied on 21 points apiece. And then Lungard, Beckman, Robert Schwartzman there. Guillaume Samaya, weirdly enough, never thought I'd say this about Guillaume Samaya, but scoring good consistent points early on in the year, that means he's still in 11th at this stage there. And you can see, yeah, Marcus Armstrong and Yuri Vips still with points on the board there. Just the two Carlins, the two Dams, Felipe Drogovic and Ralph Boschon still at yet to score. Constructors-wise, though, the gap at the top does come down there. Sharu with their strong weekend, now just 22 back. Prima still 31 points back as well. There is a high-tech rejump ART with that race victory. But thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope everyone has a wonderful Christmas as well. There won't be a video going live tomorrow, but we will return for the feature race on Sunday. You guys do not want to miss that. None of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel supporters. So a massive thank you to the Travesty, Patrick, Chuan, David, Ben, Aiden, Estasios, Cato, Sean, Johnny, McBlam, Mighty Spork, Tazief, William, and Nanon for becoming channel members. If you want to be featured at the end of all these videos, make sure you just click the join button down below.